Hello there, and welcome to episode 19 of my tutorial series for Dwarf Fortress. In this one, we are going to fight off one siege, so I'm going to go a little bit deeper about what we can do, what we can't do, what the siege means for us, and how we should prepare in the future. We're going to play around with a caged troll, and I'm going to have some fun in between with the other things here in the fortress that need some optimization, so... I'm pretty sure we will find something. At least, the least thing that we are going to do is we're going to explore deeper because I want to see where we can find the next layer of the caverns to have even more fun with. So, first things first, there's a siege. So, when we click on over here, we can check on out what type of enemies are attacking us. I see Goblin Bowman, so it's a ranged siege. Our situation here is not really the one where we just uh, should bunker up, because all our animals are sitting down here at a pasture, and, uh, well, the goblins will just ignore that little thing here and uh, slaughter all our enemies, so we shouldn't just turtle up. But I want to show you a way how to keep at least the civilians now out of the way. So we go now wherever we want to go to um, haul up the civilians and then there's the burrows menu. Here with that menu I'm going to draw a zone where all the civilians will be chilling out at. So this, this square here will be and we click there. I assign all the civilians. Done. So what that did now is pretty clear. We have all the dwarves that are not part of military now confined to this area. This doesn't work perfectly, but it sure does work good enough to lower the problems that you, that you should have there. So next step, we're selecting our military squad and we're going to station them over here. So let's do that. In the meantime, the goblins will come closer. A goblin siege, well, they are pretty straightforward. They are going to get on over here and try to murder everybody. And uh, that's pretty much all they want to do. And as you can see here, the first goblin is already coming around the corner. So we're going to station our dwarves over here. Stationing has the nice side effect that they're uh, just going to murder everybody in their vicinity. We also have snatchers, oh, so such thieves here in the vicinity. But uh, as you can see here, we, we, we don't really need to do much or, uh, or military dwarves are already kicking everybody's butt here. The thing about the stationing order is they will stand near the point and engage hostile creatures. I do like that one because now that they're done, they're uh, gravitating back to that point. So this way I can make sure to just slaughter all the monsters here. And now there's uh, two more crossbowmen left, but since the siege has been broken, I'm pretty convinced that they have seen their share of that fight. So to clean up the aftermath now a little bit more a little bit more proficient than the last time so first off we're going to cancel the order we don't need these dudes anymore so the bodies of the slaughtered goblins there i don't want to have them decomposing here in front of my fortress because nobody likes seeing them we're going to put them somewhere around there and that's also not the ideal spot where i want to have them but that's at least further away from the rest of my fortress so here corpses by the way corpses is the stockpile for dead sentient beings basically so everything that hasn't been buried yet but could be buried is going to stockpile there unlike the refuse stockpile which is uh, storing all the non-sapient uh, species we're going to improve that also worth mentioning stuff that's lying on the refuse stockpile is decaying faster that's a feature of the stockpile so next step i'm going to put the melting uh, order on top of each dead goblin i'm going to unlock that dude and i'm going to melt this positions that's what we call extracting goblinite goblinite is a resource that it can be mined directly from goblins via the way you see there, the only thing you got to make sure is that your smelters are allowed to smelt items, and that's all. So, uh, 
Is there another run-in with a goblin thief and my military? Amazing. My brave dwarves, look at them. I'm going to leave that one locked, though, because it's so far away from the base that I don't really have any interest in. In having that stuff over there. Okay, so far, so good. I'm going to order some tree chopping here, because I feel like it. And we have now seen with that siege that our situation here is not too ideal. Our pasture here is a mess. It's going. It, our animals are never going to be safe the way our fortress is designed right now. So this little defense cube here has to be expanded accordingly, but one thing at a time. For today, I want to get on downstairs here and play around with that troll a little bit. So I want to show you how to handle cages like these and what you can make with them and how they work. So first though, I want to check on out, we have a mandate from our mayor, and he's going to be pissed if we ignore it, so let's just make two beds so the mayor will be happy again. Wonderful. So, next step, I want to have a place where it can confine the troll ad, and since the dangers uh, are now over, we can now either suspend the burrow by pressing the pause button, then uh, the Thing will stay and you can just reactivate it when you need it or I'm going to delete it. In this scenario I'm going to delete it because I really don't need that burrow anymore and the next one I want to design a little bit differently or better or whatever. But with this burrow method you can quite easily make sure that there are less civilians out there making any trouble with the situation you're dealing with. All right, wonderful. So this is going to be our confining place for the troll. So when you want to move cages like that, there's two methods. Either you build it up as a piece of furniture, as we have it here. Hey, where's my troll at? Somebody's moving, wanted to move the troll. Wait a sec. <laughs> so. Or, well, I'm a little bit confused, but uh, we should be able to build them up like that. Well, the other method which will help us here is you put up a stockpile, and then you define at the animals area what kind of animal should be in the stockpile. And here we're uh, defining troll, so that cage will ultimately get assigned now. Here we go, it's already been hauled. It's the reason why we were not able to uh, access it. I wouldn't be too surprised if, uh, yeah, here we go. They put the troll to that stockpile. So what we're going to do now is we're going to tell that stockpile to grab from the stockpile up there. There we go. So now it's only a matter of time until this, uh, this stinker here is uh, going to be transported away. As we can see here, this item is tacked by a task, so there's already somebody busy hauling the stinker. But with a stockpile like I showed you there, you can clearly define which creatures should be stored there. So now it's only taking a bit of a time for the troll to arrive there. So it's worth mentioning though, oh, we have a tantrum. It's worth mentioning, though, that the creature inside the cage will be hostile, no matter what. Oh, we have a haggard kid. Though, so you can't release him and uh, expect to be on, on terms with him. You also can't kill him inside the cage. Creatures inside a cage are... It, it's literally like a stasis chamber. You can only kill them by tossing them into lava or something like that. But as far as I understood things, the creature will only die after the cage has been destroyed and then the lava will be applied to the creature without the cage. It's a little bit complicated, but it is as it is. So, uh, all right, how did this boy get haggard? So he, he, saw some, he saw somebody die, he got insulted, 
And uh, let's see, she's shameless, absolutely unfaced by the thoughts of others, strengthening after being uncovered, all right? Naturally trustful, n almost never feels discouraged. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to follow this little uh, roustabout here, but... Uh, whoa, troclodyte fight, fight underground. Tantrums are really bad. Tantruming dwarves are only doing uh, only doing bad things. They're destroying stuff. They're attacking people. Various things. But uh, all in all, the haggard attack on the um, on that kid is a sign that he's psychically in unstable. What is happening here? Why are there dwarves swarming? So this is a situation that you don't want to be in. What happens here is that uh, we have one beekeeper randomly swarming to the troglodytes, and there's a big fight down there. As you see there, there's a lot of commotion there. I really don't know what they're uh, what they want to do there right now. They uh, they they don't they don't tell me. But uh, here they want to haul leftovers from the dead monsters. So this is something that you can and should turn off when uh, when you see there um, claim other dead so uh, this this way you won't have this uh, swarm of idiots running around there and uh, trying to grab stuff from the critters down there because it's just not it, it ain't worth it you know we can do that by just locking that and uh, hopefully now the situation will resolve I'm not sure if well, right now our beekeeper has uh, brought himself into a fight so yeah he's involved there so i'm going to station my my military there because the situation might get it out of hand i have my chief medical dwarf here and it's really bad if these people get involved too heavily so this is a typical beginner's mistake to have these items underground unclaimed like that and it only brings you a lot of trouble as you can see here so now our military is uh, stepping in there and as you can see they're uh, they're totally dominating the scene they got no problem brawling down some troglodytes but our i think this guy here is in a much worse shape here seriously injured when we check out the description so uh neck is torn open that's never a good sign arms broken so really really bad so let's check out are the orderlies activated yes so ah poor sucker died so i had that was to be expected that's uh what we get for uh not locking other enemies down there so i hope you found that already quite uh quite helpful in that regard you know so our military dudes have been uh, clearing out the area and we now better have them here again because now we actually have to recover somebody's mortal remains so we better put up a burial spot there something nice and uh, let's see what kind of fighting is still happening down there all right Our military dudes, though, they are well fit and well equipped for the task at hand, so we, we're just going to leave them stationed down there for a moment until the mortal remains of our friend have been recovered, and then we're going to bring them back home. So let's see. The beekeeper has been assigned. A troll was fighting. Uncool. But our dwarfs are also capable of uh, of murdering trolls. I'm 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 positive about that. All right. So luckily we have had no bigger threat there. So we. I do consider myself lucky at this time. So let's just hope that our haulers will finally get the dead body of that poor guy down there. So, let's see. Where the hell are we, actually? So, if you want to check this out, you, it's easier to follow your uh, your soldiers. So, 
don't want the child children here. Axe dwarf. So there we go. I think if I am not mistaken, the body is not around anymore. Let's send the boys home. So this has been a a major success for our military. We saw there that these guys are really well able to fight and destroy whatever is up against us. So situation could have been way worse though i'm not gonna lie and as we see there the human bowman here that's the dude who started this fight actually and you saw their uh mangled beyond recognition on several body parts so this guy is really in a bad shape you can here check out what the wounds are boy oh boy that's a lot of wounds how are you still alive though and here you see the treatment and the history of treatment so this guy He's a lot of training for my dudes. So, next step we're going to work on with that little troll here. So, now it's going to work as intended. It didn't work because it was always tacked by a task. So you can construct the, the cages like that. That's the other method, how you can uh, put them up. And here's now the fun part. Once it's constructed, you can release them again. But uh, we, we actually don't want to do that uh, without any preparation. So let's have some fun with that. So we put up a lever here, up there. And we're going to wait until that lever has been constructed. Here, look at that. Bucket with water. That means that our orderlies are working as intended. They're bringing water to the wounded. That's great. So, oh boy. Um, yeah. So, seeing what I'm seeing here, the next dude is getting himself into trouble. What I'm going to do now, for the time being, is I'm going to lock the door. Sometimes it's it's worth locking the door, you know? So, it's fine. So, we have the lever. Now, we link the lever to that thing. I think you are already guessing where this is leading us. And um, once a lever has been linked to a cage, you can pull the lever to open the cage. I strongly recommend you to be careful if you have something caged that is making you trouble in any way or you're expecting to have some trouble with that. So um, yeah, there's more trocodyte brawl down there, but I'm not really interested in that. So I'm waiting for the linking there. Let's see how far the Monster Hunter will come. It's luckily none of ours. Monster Hunters are great, but you really got to be careful that you have the work order, the standing order here properly. Like, uh, this is this is such, uh, such, a, uh, such a really, really terrible uh, thing to, to kill off your people early on. Okay, step three. We're going to put up a wall there. So, effectively, I would not say that this is good for anything, okay? This is just for our entertainment and for showing off how these cages and the interactions with them work. I mean, this video now has given you enough understanding to see how you can work with these, no? So, I'm happy with that. There we go. And now the troll has been has been relieved um why are you why are you rotten well let's see so without the without the wall here this guy would just bash in the 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 door or anything like that i really have no clue what uh what was the problem with that troll i mean as far as I know, they cannot suffer any injury while they are in the in the in the cage. So uh, bonus points for anybody who's able to uh, to tell me what the hell's happened to the troll because I don't understand why the troll's rotting. <laughs> so thing is about Dwarf Fortress, this game has so freaking many wacky interactions that it's really hard to truly fathom everything that's happening around you. So uh, don't feel bad when when at times you just have to look up what the hell is just happening here. So I want to do another thing here. I want to stop making iron cages and start making 
either we can either make glass cages or we go for wooden cages either way i don't want to go for iron cages anymore the thing here is quite simple um it's called a terrarium by the way if it's uh, made out of uh, a, a glass cage is a terrarium so uh, iron is literally the worst material of them all because it is heavy and its only real advantage is it's fireproof glass is fireproof and lighter than than metal wood is lighter than metal but not fireproof but you get the idea so we're going to make here something like that i don't know i don't think that you can use terrariums for cage traps though i haven't tried that out yet because every time i did try i haven't had a fortress with access to glassworks but we're going to make both and experiment with that let me know if you know and so far our our actions here were quite entertaining so the caverns are dangerous don't get me wrong we can really we can really get ourselves uh, screwed over here quite hard but uh, if you pay close attention for example this cave crocodile we could slaughter that and uh, transform that into tasty meat so there are lots of things that you can do with all the mayhem and slaughter around you but you have to pay close attention to what's happening and what's not so let's go downstairs and check out our deep mine and see what has happened there i mean we literally have dug ourselves through the entire well we have a pretty deep uh metamorphic layer here if you are more interested in stuff like that this game features different rock layers so there's uh, basically a a spawn map of the entire underground with certain rules and stuff like that i am not going to go on deeper about that right now but it helps to see how deep you already are for me, it helps me to discern that I'm only at the middle ground right now to see that. More migrants! Um, that means we better be checking if we have enough living space. So each of these cells is, sent, is 10 people. So we have 20 people there. We have here... Ooh, how many are these again? Two... That's 16. So we can have 36 people here. And so what I clearly see is we're lacking uh, we're lacking apartments. So let's change that. I'm personally a big fan of these apartments. Two on two grids are my personal favorite sized apartments and or fortress for whatever reason that is. I really like these uh, blocks, but there's plenty of other methods of uh, bringing them up, like I've already shown you. But it's really important that we keep working on more living area for everybody because there's um, one guaranteed way to spiral out of control with the happiness of your fortress and that's not bringing up a living spot for everybody down here that's uh, that's really a, a foolproof way of getting into trouble that's simply because a bedroom is providing pretty much guaranteed happy thoughts for your dwarf and a good bedroom is dirty cheap. So really pays off to take that to take that piece of work here. Although as you see here, it's really a lot of carving involved and uh well personally feel like the apartment blocks of every fortress are always kind of a big deal and uh kind of a big thing to to manage because it's always uh well <laughs> It's just so much, you know, quantity-wise alone. We we do have so much work to be uh, to be done here, just by carving out all these areas. Then we have to put in furniture into all these. Then we have to engrave it. So there's uh, there there is just a lot of work to be done with all these things. But I personally like it as well because this gives me some nice city builder vibes with this game. So we're engraving here, or uh, smoothing first, if, uh, wherever necessary. Making this a bit of a more happy place. 
Okay, so let's check back with our troll if he's still alive. But uh, no, no, no. The the it is coated with helmet snake venom. So whatever happened to the troll, he was already he was already in deep trouble before he was encaged. If you ask me, that's my working theory. The cage was uh, we we caged a a troll that was already dying. That's my personal theory. We've struck native platinum, and the farmers want their guild hall. All right, so I hope this time I'm not forgetting their guild hall, just like I did the last. I must admit, this is something I am I am guilty of. I often forget to to set up the guild halls the people commission me to do. But that's mostly because I have such an on and off uh, relationship with this game, uh, with the save file here. So, by the time that I return to the save file, I often have forgotten what I what I have to do. So, if you want to be smarter than me, by the way, a pretty nice trick to, to change that behavior is to make yourself notes where you just uh, leave a note like uh, Farmer's Guild <laughs> to, to make sure that doesn't happen to you. So, let's see what kind of guilds do we have so far. I have here... Crafts dwarf skilled hall. Sometimes it's worth checking if you are not your not a uh, step ahead of yourself. The farmers guild hall. Ha! Look at that. But uh, why do we? So our broker has somehow died. All right. That's a sign of somebody else. That's interesting. Shouldn't have happened. Probably one of the people that uh, died the uh, di days in between was one of the uh, important people. The comment section has already uh, impl uh, implied that. I was just uh, just forgot to check that. So thanks for pointing out. So as you see here, these beds, by the way, they are uh, they are really valuable. They're being improved by or by or. Um, jewelers this game has a symbol code and uh, the first after uh, or before the willow is the quality those wings are assigned are are showing you that it's somehow encrusted and this is the quality of the encrusting so uh, at the end of the day we have here a bed worth 2,000 dwarf books Bam! What a value. Holy crap. So the thing here is that whenever your dwarf will now interact with that bed, he's going to have a, a high chance of having a happy thought because of that. Because it's uh, just like that. Dwarfs val love valuable and beautiful things. And uh, for them, value and, and, and beauty go quite much hand in hand. As a rule of thumb, the more valuable it is, the, the more beautiful they'll find it, and the more likely they'll have a happy thought when they interact with it. It ain't that simple, of course, but it's uh, it, it's okay to simplify it like that, for starters. So, let's do this like that. And, uh, as you see there, our, our dwarven child is uh, throwing one tantrum after another. So, let's check out if we have a... Let's see. All right, a a thing that'll help here is to unassign children from chores. That's the first thing that you can do, and a second thing that sometimes helps in this scenario. I don't know if we're uh, not already too late. So when we head on over to our crafts dwarfs, here I had them up here, haven't I? So. If you don't know where workshops are, you can always check out the places uh, thing. So here we go. Ah, oh, yeah, here. So we got our work orders to make rock rings, obviously. So one cool way of getting things done a little bit differently, we're going to delete that one, is we're going to head on over to the crafts dwarf and we're going to make rock crafts. And rock crafts are interesting in so far 
as they are a mixture of various items that you can produce out of stone. This is uh, leading to a variety of different items from bracelets to toys, whatever can be made out of the materials. This leads to a situation where you are going to be more likely to have whatever your your dwarves want to have. And children, well, to make them happier, it pays off to bring toys. You can craft toys and therefore that's pretty useful. So one of our dwarfs has a uh, has a strange mood and I want to go a little bit deeper into the strange moods this time. So when when they are doing that, you see he's uh, right now holding up stuff and they have a pretty uh, clear list of things that they want here. And here sketches pictures of glass, so we're missing glass cut gems probably we have these already we need rough gems quarry is definitely a stone we already have that so what we're going to need now is we need some rough glass so we make some raw green glass and we're uh, we're better um be we'll, we'll be better be chopping some some gemstones for this dude so what I actually wanted to talk about here, that's not what I wanted to talk about. Um, who are you? Oh, it's a troglodyte. Um, how did he come back here? Oh no, it's the beekeeper. Oh, sorry, we're being sidetracked. Um, the interesting part about a strange mood, if it is fulfilled successfully, is unless the dwarf has been possessed by some outside forces, they will be legendary in the skill which is involved in that uh, item that's supposed to be crafted. So in a nutshell, a strange mood can instantaneously produce a legendary skilled dwarf. And that's pretty interesting about that. And uh, it's not only because they die if you don't fulfill their strange moods, that you should better fulfill them. As you see there, you also get something out of it. It's not only um, it's not only artifacts. It's also a massive bump up in skill that will happen there. So a human bowman has been found dead. I bet not here, or I hope not here. <laughs> well, whatever. So here I'm carving out the gemstone from there. Let's see if our strange mooded dwarf is going to be all right so cut gems are more important than the other stuff so yeah well it ain't no problem or our jewelers should be already uh should be already starting to process the stuff any minute at least and then we'll see what will happen so here storing the stuff in the first place but we probably should be digging out some more and hope that we get the shopping list done there all right so judging from the time i would say it's a good time to outro for today i hope you found that whole thing today helpful we're going to continue next time and i'll see what i can do let me know what you think about the whole series so far or about today's episode i'd be happy to hear from you leave me a thumbs up on that episode if you enjoyed and consider subscribing I bring up daily stuff and therefore it'd be cool to have you on board. So until then, have a wonderful day. We're going to continue the adventures of this little guy here tomorrow or whenever I record the next episode. And have a good one. Bye-bye.